In this episode we are going to take a look on the FPS counter and also on the delta time. So I just prepared here a scene and we have this animated arm which moves slowly to this direction. So it moves uh, on also on the X and also on the Z axis. And um, I'm just going to show you the code. So here I'm just loading the arm model. I'm setting its initial position. I'm representing this to the render. And I'm also setting the loop to anim1. So it loops the animation 1. I'm created here a cell.x which starts at 0, a cell.z which also starts at 0, and a cell.speed which is 0.02. And here I'm created an update method and I'm added this update method to the task manager, so it will be called every frame or 60 times in a second. So every frame I'm adding to the cell.x, the cell.speed, also to the cell.z I'm adding the cell.speed, and I'm setting the arm's position to cell.x, 40, and cell.z. Okay, so uh, as I said earlier, um, by default the cinch video is turned on, so that means that the update rate of your Panda application is synchronized to your monitor's refresh rate. So in my case uh, I have a monitor with 60 MHz refresh rate, so my application runs at 60 FPS or frames per second. So so that means every frame I'm adding 0.02 units to the arms uh, X and also 0.02 units to its Z location. And let's do some calculation here. So 60 times 0.02. So it is 1.2. So my arms moves in both direction, the X and the Z, Z 1.2 units uh, every second. Uh, but what happens if you have a monitor with higher refresh rate? Uh, let's say you have a monitor with uh, 120 megahertz refresh rate. Uh, in your case, this Panda application will run at 120 FPS or first, uh, frames per second. So if you make the calculations, you will get 120 times 0.02. So on your machine, the arm will move twice as fast as on my machine, uh, which is not so good. So we should somehow constrain the arm's movement speed independently from your monitor's refresh rate or from your computer's power. Uh, okay, so that's why the delta time uh, is very useful. I'm just opened up here. If you want to know more about delta time, just search for it and open up the Wikipedia and you will find here in graphics programming the term is usually used for variably updating scenery based on the elapsed time since the game last updated. In example, the previous frame, which will vary depending on the speed of the computer and how much work needs to be done in game at a given time. Okay, so in Panda you can get the delta time, so search for Panda 3D, that global clock, and you can get the delta time using the global clock that get dt method. And here it is says. Mm, the global clock, it gets imported into the global namespace when you load the direct start or the show base modules. To get the time in seconds since the last frame was drawn, use this method. And another, another useful function is the frame time in seconds since the program started. So it re returns the time in seconds uh, since the since you started the program. I'm interested in this one, so the DT or the delta time. And uh, here it says that delta time measures the time since the last uh, update. 
and okay so I'm going to show you that what happens if I turn the video synchronization off so you can just uh, not sync but cinch uh, dash video so set the cinch dash video to zero so by default it is one so it is synchronized to your monitor's refresh rate if you set it to zero and i'm going to run the program now as you can see the arm arm moves much much faster and here in the upper right corner you see that now it is not synchronized so my application runs at 1360 or 70 frames per second uh, you should never turn this off but uh, for this purpose I'm just going to show you uh, something here in the update method I'm going to create a DT variable or, the, or delta time and I'm going to call the global clock global um, clock that get DT method oops so although PyCharm here shows an error because it doesn't know where is this global clock coming from but uh, it, it exists it also says here um, it gets imported to the global namespace when you load the show base modules so if i run it there is no error so so the correct way to actually move everything in every game engine is multiplying the speed when you add to the cell.x and the cell.z multiplying the cell.speed with this delta time so times dt and here also times dt and now if i run uh, it will move very very f slowly because we have here a very small number set to speed and we are multiplying it by by an even smaller number uh, which is um, now we have 1500 frames per second divided by one i mean one divided by 1500 <laughs> so which is this very very small number so as you can see it shows as us uh, with a scientific notation uh, so I'm just going to set the speed to a little bit bigger number so let's say to 2 and now if I'm going to run it it moves also the frames per second as you can see is 1200 about 1200 or 1300 but the arm moves uh, with the same speed as it moved when, when the frames per second was only 60 so let me print out this dt to see its value and I'm also turned back the cinch video to 1 so now uh, my application will run at 60 frames per second and turn it off and as you can see it is 0 0.016 uh, so the same as dividing one by dividing one by 60 so 0 0.016666 and uh, yeah so with this method doesn't matter if you're if you have a very strong or a very weak computer if you have a monitor with a refresh rate of 90 megahertz or 30 megahertz or 120 megahertz the movement speed will be always consistent so that's why it's useful to always multiply your speed variable with the delta time